Christine, we're here today at St. Luke's Church in Weest. Uh, it's an incredible church with some fascinating history. And I believe you're the lady who knows most about the church's history. And you're going to be kind enough to give me a small conducted tour, is that correct? Yes. Shall we start by looking at some of Mr. Kemp's windows in the Lady Chapel? Right. The subject of these windows is St. Stephen and St. Paul. Uh, the inscription to the glory of God and in memory of James Latham Burley who was born in 1847 and died in 1866. We know from the Kemp Company records that these windows are, were installed in 1892. They are both very typical of Kemp's mature style with detailed drawings, especially of the faces. Considerable use of stipple shading and much use of jewels, especially in the hems of the garments. We are now in the Lady Chapel of St Luke's Church. Could you tell me about the Kemp windows to our left? I can, love. Yeah, we know that uh, it's the meeting of Christ and John the Baptist. Um, they were installed in 1877 when the chapel was constructed. All these windows are by Kemp Studios, but in very different style and much earlier than the windows in, that you've just seen. Indeed, they are amongst the earliest windows by C.E. Kemp in Lancashire. So we've got the christening robe behind us. I can love it. It was um, bought by, uh, well, it was given to us from uh, a lady called Mrs Ethel Hancock. And it was, um, the age of it was 1896 it was bought. And she, it was used by over 20 um, members of her family. And then there's a lady that still comes to the church who had her se uh, seven sons baptised in it. And there's some pictures here of the seven sons with the robe on. This is obviously the baptism area in the church, and it's the baptism at the temple, and then Mary and Joseph on the donkey um, with Jesus. And the inscription on the stone ledge is in loving memory of Dorothy, second child of Francis Hornby Burley, again a benefactor and Margaret Burley. Um, the child died at age two. She was born on August 12th, 1879, and died January 1880. The probable maker of the windows was Clayton and Bell. Uh, we're now in the All Saints Chapel. There's two camp windows to the right of us. Could you tell what they depict? Um, yeah, it's St. Peter and St. Luke. That's St. Peter with the keys of heaven, isn't it? Yes, yes, and St. Luke, the evangelist. And we all know that St. Luke was a, a doctor, as well as um, an evangelist. Um, and the inscription on them is, To the glory of God, in the memory of Thomas Hornby Burley, born May the 11th, 1815, died January the 26th, and Anne, his wife, born July the 18th, 1820, and she died in 1866. The maker is C.E. Kemp. Can you tell me about the windows now of St. Mark and St. Andrew? Yes. Um, the inscription on them, to the glory of God and in memory of Sarah Holmes, a worshipper in this church, and it was erected by her children. These windows were made and installed by the local firm of T.H. Lee in 1924. Notice how they imitate the styles of the Kemp glass windows. It's a very good imitation. This window is uh, the woman of Samaria. It's in reverence of God and in affectionate memory of Edward Tootle, who died on September 22nd, 1873. Christine, several names, uh, familiar names to me keep cropping up that relate to streets and roads in the area, Tootle being one. Tootles were the benefactors of the church, with, along with other people. And, um, was that Tootle Broadhurst, the company? Edward Tootle and Margaret Tootle, yes, I would, yeah. I would imagine so. And there's also a familiar name that will come to in a minute, Goulden, which... Yes, another benefactor, huge benefactor of the church. Christine, we're now at the altar of the church. Could you tell me about the four windows on either side? This one is Jesus bearing his cross, and then go forth and preach the gospel, he's telling people. Um, the mem the uh, inscription on it is W.T. Blacklock, who was also a benefactor of the church. Uh, he was born on July the 25th, 1816, 
and he died on June the 20th, 1872. Then we go on to the main altar window, which is the Transfiguration. There's no inscription on this window. It seems it's been quite a, a wealthy parish, an affluent parish at one time by the... Very much so, very much so. And the streets around the church depict all the benefactors of all, of all the names and the factories and that. Um, you know, Gore Crescent and um, Tootle Drive and... Goulden Street, yeah. yes. Was Goulden, I assume he attended this church then, didn't he? We imagine so, as he married Emmeline Pankhurst in this church. What is, uh, very little known, but I think it's of incredible historical importance. This church has got links with the women's suffragette movement, hasn't it? Quite yeah. important links. Could you tell us what they are? Emily Goulden, as she was then, married Richard Pankhurst in this church. We all know who Emily Pankhurst is, the famous suffragette. We've got a copy of the marriage certificate. 1879. That's right. Robert Goulden was a prosperous but self-made owner of a local calico printing and bleach works. He lived with his family in Seedley Cottage, a big house with a large attractive garden not far from the growing city where the working masses lived in great hardship. No trace of Seedley Cottage remains, but it is on the south side of Western Street, Seedley, where Grange Street is today. Christine, I'm particularly interested in the war memorials. You've got the plaques on the wall, plus the brass memorial. But you told me a rather interesting story about, is it Frank Thompson? Yes, yes. On looking at the plaques, they are just plaques. And I was speaking to a man one day and said, I would love to have the plaques brought to life. And this man helped me. And, and we worked for quite a while on it, and we've now got Frank Thompson's diary, which was very kindly donated by his family, his wartime diary. He died in 1915 in the Dardanelles. He was only um, a young man, and uh, we're absolutely honoured to have this. At the same time, we researched and found most of where all the people on the plaques are buried. Do all these be local parishioners, local men? Yes, men. yes, yes. That's a yes. great thing, it, thing that you've done, isn't it? To well, record, I think it's to wonderful. To be... the lives of these young lads. Yeah. Because we're the average age, we've got 22, isn't it? Correct, it's, correct. It's, uh... And we've got quite a lot of um, memorials. This Frank Thompson lived in, in a corner shop, a chemist, I believe, on one of the I think it was on the corner of Derby Road, or East Lane. So he was that local. But his family very, very kindly gave us that diary, which we treasure. Christine, we're at the War Memorial windows. We've got St George and St Nicholas. Could you tell us some further information? Well, the inscription on them, it says, uh, there's some corner of a foreign field that is forever England. These men see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. They were made and installed by T.H. Lee, a Wiest company, Wiest Stained Glass Works, Hadley placed Wiest Lane, and they were made in 1920. Thompson and Sons of Peterborough were responsible for the whole of the work of the angel, the rolls of honours in the windows. Actually, we have the children in church a lot from the local schools, both for their Victorian lessons and for their lessons about the war. And I have them looking all over the church for Father Christmas. I'm quite cruel, really, because Father Christmas is St Nicholas. Um, but they eventually find him. And uh, we've got some lovely drawings that the children have done because I asked them at one point to draw their own stained, window, stained glass windows. Oh. I gave them a template. And I've got Elvis in stained, <laughs> stained glass windows and everything else. <laughs>